Hi everyone and welcome to the world of the Marble Machine X. Last week we had a huge success with 10,000 marbles played in a row with zero fails. In this video I want to try to beat that by playing 20,000 marbles hopefully with zero fails. Before I can make the 20,000 marble test, I wanted to tell you something that I'm really, really excited and happy about. On Wintergatan.net, there's a free license to use any Wintergatan song on YouTube as background music or as streaming music on any internet platform. The license is 100% free. You can use the music forever as long as your usage is complying to the license. I've wrote this license myself. There's no lawyer language in there. So just go to wintergatan.net to the pay what you want section, download the license, read it through, and you can also download some music from the video series. There are some build tracks to download there for free. And also, of course, all our official music is there to download entirely for free. I'm so happy to do this open source thing. And it's really thanks to the support from the patrons and the YouTube members that it feels like a no brainer for me to just share what I've created. If you want to, you can choose to pay something for the music and for the license. And I'm super happy if you do, and I'm super happy if you don't. This is really for everyone to use and have fun with. I myself think it's super hard to find good background music to videos, and I just thought I could maybe help someone out with this. Whenever I talk about this download page, the servers are usually crashing from the high traffic loads. So if the page is acting strange, just try again later and it will work fine. To get the marbles from the marble divider down to the marble dropper, I need to design a marble transport that is kind of special. So there are five requirements for this marble transport that I'm just about to design. First, it needs to transport the marbles. Secondly, we need to adjust the top height of the top marble inside the marble divider using the height modules that I built in episode 139. Third requirement for the marble transport is that it has to alleviate the marble pressure. When all the marbles stack up in a long line, it makes a huge down pressure on the sliding marble gate. If the pressure is too high, the gate can't slide. So I have to somehow design a marble track that also causes some friction for the marble. Too much friction and the marble gets clogged. Too little friction, we have too much pressure on the gate. The fourth requirement is that we have to solve a problem that I had with the PMA pipes. When all the tracks is in one plane, you run out of space really fast. So I have to kind of divide the tracks onto several planes. The fifth requirement is that I would like to not use so much PMA pipes. We spend so much time manually bending 38 PMA pipes in this project. So I wanna try to make them out of another material this time. Everything I do in this video is building up towards playing 20,000 marbles and beat the high score from last week. To design the combined marble track with the pressure valve, I made one, two, three, four, five prototypes. This is the first one, let's check out how it worked. On the first prototype, I wanted to try these zigzag tracks to see how they could stop the marbles. The patterns are not random, they're designed for the marble size. And as any good scientist, I have a straight control group so I can measure the difference between straight and zigzag. So one marble weighs 16 grams. Two marbles should be 32, exactly 32. In this test tube, I can fit 30 marbles, 452 grams. So the first zigzag lane does not work at all. The marbles are not coming through. The same problem in this one. Also this one is getting stuck. This track here seems to work. So let's measure here. 220 grams. These tracks didn't work at all and these tracks didn't help with the marble weight enough. So I created prototype 2. On the second prototype I made the curves straighter. Let's see how prototype 2 performs. Almost 200. 200. So we went from 450 grams to 350 on prototype 1 and 200 on prototype 2. I think we can do better. So on this third prototype, I realized that I could actually cut grooves straight through to actually be able to see the marbles from the outside. I thought that was pretty cool. I 
I also got a fun idea on this upper section. So when you combine these two, what I did is that I removed material from here. So you will actually be able to see the marbles inside the track. To understand the design concept behind Prototype 3, I've set up a little experiment here. These three lanes have the same angle, all of them. And I'm going to start the marbles at the same time. Watch what happens. Let's try that one more time. So channel one is always the fastest, followed by the middle channel, and channel three is always the slowest. This is because of over rotation, a concept that Marius showed me early on in the Marble Machine X process that has been so useful to know. The difference between the three tracks is the distance between the tracks. So you can see the first marble is running on top of the tracks. The second marble runs a little bit lower because the tracks are further apart and the third track is furthest apart. But why is this making such a big difference in the marble speed? So from the front perspective, you can see that the marble lies lower when the tracks are separated. And here's a side perspective, you can see the same thing. And if we enlarge in the side perspective, we can take a closer look at the rolling diameter. So when the marble rolls on the bottom, it needs to roll 16 millimeters to roll its own length. But what happens here when the marble is rolling on a tighter rolling diameter, as in the second lane. If that diameter is 7.5, it has to roll two times around its own center to cover the same distance as on the first track. And on the third example, with a very small rolling diameter, it has to roll three times. This slows the marble down. Why it slows the marble down? <laughs> I can't really tell, it's some kind of Newtonian physics that I can't grasp. So on the third prototype, I used the concept of over rotation and by making a long snake marble path. And then if we check from the side here, the profile of the marble lane is not a round circle. The contact point of the marble is here and here to force the marble to over rotate and run slower through the marble tracks. <laughs> wow, 64 grams. That's pretty amazing. Let's take another measurement. 73. That's brilliant. There's a total of 70 marbles in this queue and still it's only 60 grams. So you can see there's not a lot of friction created. I can take an A4 paper and I can push it under. So this is 430 grams of pressure. There's no way I can push the paper in under this marble queue. So the third prototype had 65 grams of pressure with 70 marbles. And the other prototypes had like 200 and 300 grams with only 30 marbles. So huge success pressure wise. However, I didn't like the stepping inside this module. To make the fourth prototype, I went into CAD and adjusted the routing of the marble tracks to make the marbles flow easier. This shape creates too much resistance of the marbles and I'm going to fix that now here in CAD. So this extra turn here is too much resistance. I'm going to remove it. And I want to show you how the sweep command works because it's kind of cool. When you have a sweep command, first thing is to choose a profile. And this is the profile I have of my marble lane. And then you choose a path and this is this line here. And that profile will then be cut throughout and following the path that I made. So what's cool with parametric design is that I should be able to just alter this path and get a completely new marble lane. So this is the sketch of my path. 
and I wanted to remove this extra corner for the marble, so I'm just clicking away. I know that the path has to end up down here. I have locked that point. That point cannot move. So I'm simply going to connect this in some way. And it's important in a path for a sweep that everything is tangential. So I'm using this tangential constraint to smooth out all the connections. Here you can see how we have cut the corner down here. And I edit my sweep. I deselect the previous path and I reselect my new path. Boom. I'm just checking that there's no bands that are too tight. I think this looks good. So this is the previous shape. And here's our new shape. That looks really nice actually. This plywood I bought in France and it's absolutely rubbish. In Sweden, a batch of plywood that falls apart like this would not have been sold. High quality birch plywood should never fall apart in the layers. So many things that I love about France, but it's really tricky to get hold of quality wood. And once you do, it costs 10 times. So here's a new prototype. I'm omitting this whole detour for the marbles. It just goes straight and down there. I'm totally going into the role as the mad 10 million marble scientist. I have notepads, I have scales, I have test tubes, I have measurable results, I have everything it takes to be the top 10,000 million mad marble scientist. I got carried away because I think this looks so cool. It's formed from function again, and I haven't thought a lot about making this looks cool. I just thought about the function, but it gave this form and I think it's brilliant. Imagine 38 channels of this with marbles going everywhere. What I'm looking for now is the smoothness. Like this is exactly what I wanna see. When I lower this marble like five millimeter, the top marble is lowered five millimeter. Okay, that's better. Let's check the weight. 75, only 10 grams more, that's good. 105. Ah, this is really good. 95. Say 100 then. A little bit more trickier on prototype four, but I can still do it. 100 grams for prototype four with 70 marbles. So this pressure increase was to be expected since we made it easier for the marbles to flow. But I'm gonna try to make a fifth prototype a little bit thinner and see if I can strike that perfect compromise maybe aiming for something like 90 grams. It's always surprising how many small little details you can improve when you're doing prototyping. I found so much in prototype four that I could make better. So I created prototype five. So here's the fifth and final prototype. I struggled with the bad plywood quality, but I glued it together and I made these parts thinner. Here to the right on your screen is the previous and this is the new one. So in last week's 10,000 marble test, this gate could do this marble queue without problem. I'm gonna rip it off the machine because it's just a test queue and weigh it. Hmm, I was hoping for higher, 125. So the machine had proved that it can handle anything under 125 grams, which gives me an upper limit when making prototype five. The gate never failed on this value. So maybe it could handle more, but this is the only thing we know it can handle. So these are the marble height modules I built in episode 139. The marble modules will come on top of this. They fit in there. And if I discover that this marble path is too long or too short, I can take this out and I can put another value in. Prototype five with the marble modules installed. Let's check if it runs smooth. Yeah, it does. So we have smooth running and now for the weight test. 75. If this can be repeatable, we're in business. 81. 85. 79. Looks very good. 
71. I'm gonna add these marbles to the top and see how it affects things. Whoa, almost nothing. So for prototype 5, I was hoping for 90 grams. I can erase that. 80. Woo! So 80 gram is far below the proved value of 125 and it's flowing. Everything is good. Now we can put this on the machine. What do you think, Wilson? He really likes the 80 gram of the prototype 5. <laughs> Wilson, I'm going downstairs. Don't play with the scale too much, okay? to do with you. Are the two marble lanes that goes down to the snare drum and here you can see when I roll a marble in the marble divider this marble stays too high so in order for the marble divider to work the marbles has to sit flush with this surface I can open this lock here and pull these modules out so when you look inside these modules you can see this curve and this curve is longer the higher this number is. At the front the marble was 2 mm too low and the module was 18. I'm going to try replacing the 18 with 16 and see if that can make up for this 2 mm difference.
Wait a minute. This isn't my world. Doctor is ready with a notepad. Let's do some diagnostics of this test. And to summarize, I would say mixed feelings because there's marbles all over the floor. But I think the issues that caused the marbles to end up on the floor are quite minor. And on the other hand, there was a lot of new parts that behaved flawlessly for all the 20,000 marbles. So I'm feeling very optimistic. Let's start to look at the positive things. So first of all, the pressure ball handled the pressure. <laughs> it worked perfectly. It not only worked perfectly, it also looked great. It's a perfect example of form from function, and I just love it. Secondly, the double marble gate. In the first test, we only used the left channel. Now we activated both channels and they performed flawlessly for 20,000 marbles. I'm very happy with the gate design. This thing keeps on giving. Good. The modular marble height system for the flushness of the marble divider worked perfectly. Not a single problem with this system over 20,000 marbles. Great. For this test, we also activated the divide by four, which wasn't in use in the first test. That keeps on delivering without problem. But we also used the fish there for the first time. Not a single problem. I have adjusted how the conveyor belt picks up the marbles and now it works great. 20,000 marbles passed through this conveyor belt with zero issues. I think the gear train is better than ever and we removed so much friction. So the whole power transmission of the whole machine is also flawless. The routing from the marble divider through down to the marble height module between the moving links is also perfect. I just feel when I'm using this machine after this redesign how nice it is. Negatives. 90 marbles missed the snare funnel. So marbles missing the funnels is not a critical problem in the sense that it will not destroy the Marble Machine X. However, these marbles that missed the funnels is actually the most disappointing fail of today for me. I hoped for full score like we had last week, 10,000 out of 10,000. And I know I can solve it. The thing I don't know is how beautifully I can solve it. Fail 2 occurred here in the transition from the conveyor belt into the marble divider. So when I was preparing the test and I had my camera rolling, I saw this strange marble rolling out on the floor. And I think it escaped somewhere here. So fail 3 is a clogging of the marble divider. And this is the least critical one because this is only temporary. And to make this test work, I had to tape these marbles in here to the marble divider so they could slow down other marbles. So these marbles would fall in here. However, this tape let go after some time and these holes were created and that clogged the marble lane. Fail two and three managed to put 42 marbles on the floor. Issue four, and I'm calling this an issue, I don't call it a fail, is that I still hear some vibrations that comes occasionally and they sound strange. I think the two large timing belts, this belt here and this belt on the other side, I think they sometimes come into resonance. So at certain speeds, I see them start vibrating and then drrr, they go heavier and heavier and heavier. And I think we could actually fix that by just having two runner wheels in the middle, giving a little bit extra tension and stopping the belt from being able to run around it. If I'm lucky, just two runner wheels here and on the other side, 
will stop this shaking and might make the marbles hit the funnel more accurately. I don't know, but this is issue four and I'm going to fix it. Let's compare the results of this test with the two previous tests we've made. So we can see that we doubled again the amount of marbles. We played 20,000 marbles, but we also had 61 marbles that failed and that led to a reliability score of 99.997. In the first test we had 99.996 and the second test we had 100% and it felt like we lost today so I made a different way of counting the score so we actually won today. <laughs> it's a really good trick if you're losing you just change the rules so you're winning again. But seriously I found out uh, actually a more accurate way of scoring these tests. I've also included how many parts of the machine we're using. So here in tracks use you can see that for the first two tests we only used one half of all the 38 channels because we didn't even use the marble divider. And in today's test, we used two out of 38 channels. And I want to kind of include that in the score. I think that gives a much better picture of what we're actually succeeding with here. So if I then multiply the reliability score with the percentage used, we get a final score of 5.49%. In a way, seeing those marbles on the floor again was a little heart crushing, but I actually think that we made a lot of good progress and we collected a lot of good data. So right after I'm publishing this video, I'm gonna get on it and fix the four fails that we found today. And I'll be back as soon as possible with like a 22,000 marble test, hopefully with no marbles on the floor. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone watching this build series. I hope to be back already next week with crushing this score and fixing these issues. And a special thanks, of course, to the YouTube members and all the Vintgatan patrons. Your support is absolutely crazy and it keeps me going in into the fire cloud, <laughs> like in Mad Max. <laughs> Thank you. See you next week. Let's crush some high scores.